We've come along to the Salisbury Library to see an exhibition which is entitled Edith Remembered and it's this fascinating lady who lived in Wilton. So who are we going to see? We're going to see Annette Downing and she's going to take us around. Come with us. Annette, thanks for inviting us here today. Can you tell us something about Edith? Yes. Well, Edith Olivier was a completely remarkable lady who lived at Wilton for nearly all her life. Um, she's known as a novelist um, from between the wars. Most of her books were written in the late 20s, 30s, and then um, during the Second World War, and um, just shortly after, because she died in 48. And uh, her connections with Wilton went back a long way because her father was rector of um, Wilton Rectory. Oh, and um, so you know, she grew up there on the, you know, as part of Wilton and great friends with the Pembrokes and uh, people around locally. But she had many, many friends who were artists, didn't she? Yes, yes she's completely fascinating. When she um, left Wilton for a couple of years to come and live in Salisbury and then returned to Wilton, was offered a house, the day house actually, this, yes. on the Wilton estate where she and her sister Mildred lived. And uh, because of the Pembrokes and because of other friends she had, she came into the circle of sort of young artists of, of the period of the 20s and 30s, people like Rex Whistler, yeah. who painted uh, this wonderful painting, mm. and um, sort of other well-known people like uh, Siegfried Sassoon, the poet, uh, the photographer, um, Cecil Beaton, mm. um, sort of lots of the sort of uh, literary and artistic uh, sort of great of that period, really. Well, most of these uh, pictures and photographs are privately owned. It must have taken a hell of a long time to get them all together. It did. It took me about a year and a half. Does <laughs> it really? Yeah, just sort of tracking down. I mean, there, there are lots of... Uh, because, because it's sort of domestic and the fam families and uh, connections still exist or people knew Rex Whistler and, and they sort of came in, into their sort of life, they've tended to hold on to them. And uh, uh, But I was just so fascinated, really, by the life of, of Edith and this wonderful circle of people who came down to Wilton and into you know, around Salisbury because of Edith. It's been a great artistic period. It was, I think, and also um, literary as well. You've got people like uh, Lord David Cecil and Otley Morrell and all those sort of, uh, sort of aesthetic um, and artistic people of that period who, who came across Edith were completely fascinated by her because she was an amazing personality and her sort of involvement in things, not just artistic, but sort of local and, uh, and other things. It's, it's phenomenal. You wonder how she managed to get the time to fit everything in, actually. She was also uh, the Lady Mayor at one she stage. She was Lady of Mayor, yes. I mean, because of her, her connections with Wilton and her father, uh, she had this great civic and uh, sort of sense of, of involvement and wanted to be part of the, the community and, and valued Wilton and that sort of town very highly. And so she was the first lady councillor for Wilton Council, and then the first lady mayoress, and 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 was involved really. I mean, uh, there's a lovely quote where someone was saying that uh, Edith knew everything, just you know, down to how the drains worked in Wilton, <laughs> and and um, and so uh, and really worked very hard as a as a, the mayor and councillor and made it her business to find out everything that was going on and made sure that things worked well. These are the original illustrations that Rex Whistler did for a book that Edith wrote during the war called Night Thoughts of a Country Landlady. And they're just completely lovely because Rex had this fantastic sense of humour and, uh, and, and Edith as well. I mean, they were great, uh, they had a shared sense of humour, I think, and they enjoyed the same thing. So although they enjoyed serious things, they also had this sort of... Uh, quirky sort of feel about life and people. There was a big age gap between them. Though. There was. Uh, Rex, when they first met, Edith was uh, 54 and Rex was just 19, mm -hmm. but they just shared so many interests. I mean, there was just this sort of immediate rapport like there is that sort of aged us somehow. Yeah. And these, e these yeah, are great. They are. They're wonderful. Edith wrote this um, really to sort of, because the impact on a little town like Wilton during the war was tremendous. It, uh, you know, it wasn't just the fact that they were facing uh, you know, sort of fascism and Hitler. They're actually facing these huge changes on a little town that hadn't, you know, it had sort of gone along in its own way. It was a sort of agricultural town and, and sort of market town. And then suddenly they've got a, 
Wilton House is a, a, a major centre with officers being sent down there. You've got the arrival of evacuees, like here, between two and three hundred children had arrived. And, uh, you know, finding places, Edith was very keen to, to find places for the children and also their mothers. She's a very kind lady, I think. She did try and uh, start a new gardens town or something. Yes, when she was um, mayor, just before the war, um, she, she was very interested in architecture anyway and very interested in um, uh, the sort of people of Wilton and, and how, they, how they lived and the, and the fact that the size of Wilton uh, was just right but she was aware that you needed new housing and so um, she was part of this group that was looking at things like garden city developments oh, yes. so that they actually fitted in with the rural community yeah. and she went a long way to actually working out plans and designs and working with architects to have a sort of small garden city built in Wilton but unfortunately the war came along so and, that, and that, that ended that. <laughs> this is where she grew up and um, Rex painted this during the war. He came down to stay with Edith a lot, I mean, from uh, late 20s onwards. But during the war, I think Edith was a sort of refuge for him to come when he was on um, leave. And he wasn't involved in any sort of big work. So he, he really was experimenting and, and working, with, uh, working on canvas. And uh, he, he was asked to paint this, which Edith was delighted about, really. The one, the first one, is his first attempt when, when it was very wet and rainy and in fact they were flooded out oh, and it wasn't working so he abandoned it and then turned it into this sort of longer panel putting in the campanile from the church and the house. He, he, also, um, he also painted this completely yeah, that's lovely, beautiful painting of um, the river that goes to the Wilton Estate. Um, there's the Palladium Bridge and this is the bridge that was next to the day house where, where Edith lived. And um, there are lots of photographs of them, um, you know, at weekends having a house party sort of guests, but going for walks around the estate and photographs of them sitting on, on the bridge. These are um, the book illustrations for, for, many of her, for many of her books, which Rex, Rex did them all, actually. Um, that's the Seraphim Room. All her books are sort of based out of her experiences of living in Wiltshire. So, for example, that one's based really on um, Montpesson House in the Close, uh, about someone who lives there and his daughter. And they're, they're quite intimate books in the sense of, of their people's relationships to one another. And when relationships are put under stress, what happens to yes. those relationships? So you've got sort of father and daughter type relationships, or, or there's, um, there's one here, Dwarf's Blood, which was very, very um, sort of received great critical um, acclaim in, in America at the period where it's about a, a woman who marries this man and they have a child who's a dwarf and the, and the husband will have nothing to do with it saying it's nothing to do with him and then into the story his mother comes who is a dwarf and you realize this is a great big psychological barrier that he wasn't going to accept that and it's all about how the relationship is developed and how he comes to accept his child and this, this is one of my favorites this country muse and tenses which is all about Wiltshire and all that she values in Wiltshire, because she absolutely loves Wiltshire and feels that she belongs here to Wiltshire and never left it. And, um, and, and Rex did the most wonderful uh, book cover design and book plate design for that, uh, which we can see, which sort of brings in all these different elements of country life. Yeah. And it, who took these wonderful these, photographs? These are all by Cecil Beaton, which is why they're so absolutely beautiful. Um, this is Edith in the long room where her friends used to gather. They say conversation was the chief amusement in the long room. Yeah. And, and Rex actually decorated it for He painted these beams saying, Darling Edith, over them. So, uh, and here she is laying on her, uh, sort of reclining on her day bed. Yes. And she, she was a very skilled needleworker. And uh, when she's entertaining, she's often sort of sitting there with needlework in her hand, talking to people about music or art or literature mm. or whatever. She's here she is at work. Here she is at work typing, because um, the first book that she wrote, The Love Child, um, she wrote in, uh, it by hand, and then she says in her diaries, I have such a terrible job, I can't read my own writing. So she teaches herself to use the typewriter. But this one's amusing. It says, um, it's called Edith in Honesty, because the flowers are honesty. In and, Honesty. Uh, in Honesty. <laughs> this is lovely. Oh, this is beautiful. This is, again by Rex, this wonderful watercolour of the long room, the ones that's shown in the photograph. And you've got um, Rex leaning up against the fireplace as a sort of self-portrait. Lady Otley Mole sitting in the chair, uh, Lord David Cecil sitting at the end of the daybed, and, and Edith 
reading to them, that the sort of reclining on the day bed. This is where all the, the talking was done. Yes. Yeah. These old paintings are absolutely beautiful. They just jump out at you, don't they? They do. I mean, I, th I think they're... Rex Whistler's really beginning to find his own style, I think, with these smaller works. I mean, he's very well known for the large murals and things. Um, but but this, this series that he did during the war, he's really getting a great sense of light and colour and and they're completely beautiful. And uh, thanks very much for showing us around here today. It's wonderful and most interesting. Oh, thank you very much for coming, and I hope people come and discover Edith for themselves. <laughs> Tell us again when the, the, the exhibition finishes. It finishes on the 26th of October, which isn't, isn't long now at all, but um, it's, it's here in, in the main library until then. So come. It's well worth it. Thanks again. Thank you. <laughs>